Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're going to talk about these power stations, but we're going to talk about power stations from power tool manufacturing brands. We're going to talk about these three specifically. We'll also talk about the Milwaukee MX V1 in general. So anyways, we'll talk about that and try to help you try to figure out maybe which one's better for you or maybe one's more suited for you. But anyways, stay tuned. All right, you guys, so these three right here are probably the most popular power stations that are probably on the market from power tool manufacturing brands, okay? There's also the Milwaukee MX Fuel, which we don't have here. Um, we don't have one of those, but we, we uh, can talk about that one also included with some of this. So with that being said, now it's probably a good time to mention none of this video is sponsored. Nobody sent this to us. This is our own opinions, stuff that we owned or acquired with our own monies or whatnot. So make sure you keep that in mind when we talk about these uh, power stations. So um, with that being said, let's talk about power stations in general. What are we considering a power station, okay? A power station for this video all intents and purposes is really a, uh, uh, a, a, a in, inverter or a generator in a way, so to say, um, that, that converts DC uh, from batteries to AC 120 volts US for usage, okay? Um, that's what we're really gonna be talking about quoting power stations, okay? Some of these people call like things that can take solar inputs and stuff like solar generators, that's technically, I guess, inaccurate or whatnot. But anyways, power stations, we're gonna be talking about that, okay? So anyways, there's a lot of power stations on the market right now. You go to Lowe's, Home Depot, uh, Amazon, wherever you shop, you're gonna see probably hundreds of different kinds of power stations, okay? So, um, but we wanna talk about the ones that are made by power tool manufacturing brands. Why? Mainly because two things. One, um, the brand quality and things that really come behind it, meaning um, if you, you probably find a bunch of power stations, you probably never even heard of the brand, right? You're putting, you're investing a lot of money in stuff that it's probably not like time tested or proven or things like that. And also the battery platform, okay? So a lot of those things you'll kind of see have like a sealed battery inside of the power station, okay? That's problematic for multiple reasons. One, the entire life of that device is gonna be like over its lifespan, it's gonna be determined by the battery that's in it. It's gonna be charged X, Y, Z so many times and things like that. You probably can't increase capacity or all that kind of stuff. Um, and, and the other half of that is really the battery platform. So if you're gonna be buying a tool that has, that takes a battery, why wouldn't you just buy a tool from a quality brand that already has time tested and also use those same batteries in other tools, all right? So like for instance, take these for example, right here in front of me. Um, these, this one, the dual power station will take 20 volt batteries and also dual flex volt batteries, okay? And those batteries are gonna be interchangeable through other tools that you can really use. If you buy, let's take for instance, not knocking Jackery or anything, but the Jackery uh, power stations, right? Um, I mean, you can't really use the battery inside of that tool for anything else. Sure, it's convenient because it's light, small, all-in-one device carry-on, but anyways, the point is that if you're gonna be buying something like this, I would invest in something more like this. Okay, so um, with that being said, let's really get into some of it. We'll go over high-level detailed things and we'll really talk more in detail about some of these items, all right? So this one right here is the Ryobi 40 volt power station. The model number is RYI1802B6. And it's fairly new. It uses their 40 volt lithium uh, batteries, okay? And these batteries are mainly in the Ryobi OPE lineup of tools, meaning lawnmower, spring trimmers, blowers, all that kind of stuff, okay? And um, I mean, it generally works pretty well. So and that's the Ryobi one. This one right here, uh, this tough system is not included, um, but this um, right here is the DCB 1800B. And this runs off their 20 volt platform. Okay, this is from the wall. And this one right here is the Ego Nexus power station, model number PST3040. Uses the Arc Lithium batteries from um, Ego, and, and their batteries are mostly all OPE tools. Ego is an OPE battery power brand, okay? And they also have a nice Z6 mower, whatnot, that's a ride on zero turn mower. Don't have one of those, but that's there. Um, Milwaukee also makes a power station we don't have. Um, they call it the Carry On. It's MXF002-2XC. I'm assuming the 2XC means that it comes with the two batteries or whatnot, but that runs under MX Fuel lineup of tools, which are more, in a way, more, more uh, I don't know, industrial oriented or whoever uses that MX line of tools, right? Most of that's gonna be like heavy duty concrete work type people. Um, but anyways, 
those are the main ones on the market. As far as I know right now, Makita doesn't technically make one right now. Um, there's obviously hacks on things you can really do um, and things like that, but those are generally the power tool brands that make power stations, okay? So um, let's, let's bring you in closer on some of them and we'll talk about those a little bit more in detail. All right, you guys, so let's talk about this one here real quick. This one right here is the Ryobi RYI-1806, 1802B6, okay? Run down there, 40 volt uh, lithium batteries. Um, so this one is a really 36 volt system, make sure you keep that in mind, but it is rated for 1800 watts continuous for three minutes and 1600 watts continuous and 3000 watts peak. So it's really a 1600 watt continuous inverter and it is a pure sine wave inverter, okay? So let's talk, take a look at the front here and go through some of the stuff. It's got three 120 volt AC outlets, four USB-A outlets, two USB-C Type-C uh, ports, and it's also the most interesting thing on this one is it has parallel ports, kind of like you would find in small inverter type generators um, that you can kind of parallel, but you can get two of these and get a parallel kit and parallel them together to really kind of double the power, okay? So it does have nice, um, that feature, although um, I haven't been able to get two of these, or ten, two of these, test that out. We also have a circuit breaker here. Um, it has a nice little screen here. Uh, the buttons are also fairly nice. Um, the thing on these buttons right here, you have to know is that you have to have pretty much like long fingernails or you're gonna have to have like a pen or a pencil that you can kind of press in those buttons because they're kind of pulled in or um, countersunk in a way for those buttons. It's got a nice little screen here and a small work light, which is I would say pretty much useless, but it does work here. Um, the other thing to note on this one is that it has an app that you can use from the Gen Control Ryobi app. Um, and it works via Bluetooth. There's, it's not too interesting. I mean, obviously it, it's great to have something like that, but it's not like life changing or anything, I would say. It's, it's kind of barely useful, but anyways, it is there and that's probably something to know, okay? Um, so going back to this, this is a sine wave inverter, like I mentioned already. And in order to operate this tool, you need to have a minimum of one battery inserted, okay? So this, this tool will work with one battery and the batteries are hot swappable. So I do have another full uh, review on this tool. Go check that out if you want a full review on it. But the batteries are hot swappable under load, assuming you have enough battery capacity um, for that hot swap um, event, okay? Um, so like for instance, if you're drawing a high wattage, you're probably not gonna be able to hot swap if you have two, let's say two amp hour batteries or four amp hour batteries because that one two amp hour battery won't be able to supply that load. So make sure you keep that in mind when you check it. So the way you charge this is there's a wall wart that you can plug in um, to the AC port and it puts in a proprietary uh, connection here. It's not a barrel type connector, it's a proprietary connection for this and it does work really, really slow, okay? So the way that it charges the batteries, it charges all of them sequentially very, very slow, meaning it takes one, fully charged and it moves on to the next one, charge that one, then moves on to the next one, charge that one, and then moves on to the next one. It does not parallel charge all of them slowly, it charges all of them sequentially, very, very slowly, okay? So, the, this kit is available. Um, you could buy it as a kit right now. I think it's only sold as a kit for um, 800 bucks. So for 800 bucks, you get this, you get this entire setup right here. It also comes with a little cover that you can do, but you get the inverter, um, inverter, and then you get to uh, six amp hour batteries. So with the kit that it comes with, it's 432 watt hours of batteries. Um, obviously you could go and buy two more six amp hour batteries for about 180 bucks each. And you could build a, what you would call like a high wattage or high draw, high performance kit or whatever you wanna call it for two additional six amp hour batteries, which will bring you to a total of $1,160, but it will give you 864 watt hours of battery capacity, okay? So make sure you keep that in mind, but that is pretty much a general overview of this, all right? We'll probably try to see if we can go into the, into the app a little bit later, all right? All right, so while we have um, that, let's talk about the DeWalt DCB 1800B. All right, you guys. So this right here is the DeWalt DCB 1800B. And this one is probably the first one, I think, out of all of these on the market and it's kind of been around for a while. So this one runs on the DeWalt 20 volt max platform, okay? 
the way I generally use it is using it with the flexible batteries because they obviously have bigger capacity now. Um, well, right now they probably have bigger capacity in 20 volt, but I have these and this is what I've been using it for. So uh, on a 20 volt battery platform, um, you can obviously, like I have here, using flexible batteries, which I do, it is convenient, okay? So the, um, the basic voltage, battery platform voltage is 18 volts. <clears throat> Our thing to keep in mind is this is rated for 1800 watts continuous and 3000 watts peak, okay? And this is a modified sine wave inverter, okay? So this is not a pure sine wave inverter, but a modified sine wave inverter. So it's not necessarily the best for sensitive electronics, but I will tell you for all the times I've used it on plasma TVs or, or LED TVs nowadays and, and stereo things, haven't had a problem with it to each their own. Obviously you may cause issues with sensitive electronics, but anyways, works fine. Was able to power our fridge during like an eight hour power outage overnight had no problem, um, but obviously we weren't going in and out of the fridge. It did also power some of our stereos and some of the stuff we had going on around the shop every now and once in a while. You could probably see here, there's probably remnants of something that we were routing, like trim molding that we're routing, and it does work really well, okay? Um, I'll probably bring in the router later to talk about that. Anyways, so on this one, like I said, uses four t um, 20 volt batteries, okay? and you have to use all four batteries at once, okay? You cannot use the system with three batteries or two batteries or one battery. It has to have all four in order for the AC part of it to work, okay? So um, on this one, you have one AC output port and one AC input port. It does not do pass through or any of that. If you do want to use it, pretty much what you do is they've set this up pretty nice where you take an extension cord, you plug it into the wall, and then in order to charge it, you plug it in here. So power's coming in here, you turn on, whatever, it kind of works, right? Um, actually, you don't need to turn on, you just plug it in and start charging. So um, if you want to use it the other way, meaning you, you want to use this as a battery-powered inverter, you take, actually, you want to turn it on first, right? and then you can plug it in and then plug in your tool and start using it. This one obviously has been working really nice for us. We've used this one a lot, but those are pretty much the only two ports that you really get, okay? And when it starts to get low, it'll start beeping and then the battery lights here will start flashing. I um, have a lot of experience using this, but this one has kind of been a little bit of our go-to one for um, like work, like job site work type applications, okay? Um, so like I said, it uses all four, you can't use it with one, and it does parallel charge when you charge it, all four batteries, okay? You can parallel charge one battery or two batteries in parallel or three batteries. When it charges, you can charge any number of batteries you can fit on here, but in order to use the power from the batteries, you have to have all four, okay? And because you have to have all four, it is not hot swappable, meaning if one battery is low, that is gonna be your weakest link. You need to take that one out, put a new one in and turn it back on. It will cut off right as soon as you pull it out, okay? Um, and it does not do super fast charge. It doesn't meet like regular charging. It's not super slow charge, but it is fast charge and it does have no solar input capacity unless you have some device that's using solar before you plug into it, okay? Um, this one has no Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or any of that. And so it's really like a no frills, no thrills type device. It's really designed for job site use. Um, so let's talk about pricing. So generally, I've seen this thing go for as low as around 329, maybe like 350. I think I posted a deal a couple of days ago on something like this for about 350. So it generally you can get it for about 350 to 400 ish. But I think it retails for around 450 or whatnot for the Barrett tool by itself. They also sell it as one kit with three four amp hour batteries and one six amp hour battery for $1,100, right? Um, so that's roughly brings you to about 324 watt hours of capacity. Um, if you need it for whatever, some super ultra high demand capacity, you could probably buy the, um, the tool and also um, like 12 amp hour batteries, the so flexible 12 amp hour batteries for um, four of those to bring the system capacity to 864 watt hours and it will cost you roughly around 1450 bucks okay so 12 amp hour batteries in general are like what 250 bucks ish or whatnot so keep that in mind i think they did also recently announce i think it was like 15 amp hour batteries or whatnot hasn't been like come out to market yet but they did announce it and it is available so it once that does come out it'll obviously be huge okay 
So other things to quickly note on this one is it does have um, airflow port here and really just two of these here. So the interesting thing about this one is this one was really designed to be used around the DeWalt tub system, okay? Let's take for instance this. So this is the DeWalt tub system. This is a small box that we kind of carry like certain things in. Um, but if you have it, you just drop it on here, lock it, and it's good to go, okay? Um, so this one obviously has to be a top unit because you can't put anything else really on top. But if you have the wheel kit and, and like the stand or whatnot, it's obviously great because you can just roll it around and not have to carry it, okay? The other thing this is carrying this with all the batteries is not super light. It's not super heavy either, but you can carry it one-handed by here or like here or any of that. But it is fairly simple and it does work really well. I mean, it's literally, does its purpose without having any bells and whistles. So make sure you keep that in mind, okay? So while we have you, and while we're talking about the DeWalt, let's talk about the Milwaukee one, okay? So the Milwaukee one, we don't really have um, right now in front of us, but they do make one on their MX Fuel platform. The model number is MXF002-2XC. What I'm assuming with the 2XC means the two um, XC kit that it comes with, which means it comes with two six amp hour batteries, okay? So um, on that platform, which is a 72 volt platform, the MX Fuel, um, it also does 1800 watts and 3600 watts, or 1800 watts continuous and 3600 watts peak, okay? But that MX Fuel carry-on is a uh, pure sine wave inverter, whereas this one is not. Okay, it does have two um, 120 volt outlet ports, okay, and it has no USB ports and the number of batteries required to operate the tool is a minimum of one. So it can use two, but um, you need a minimum of one to operate the tool, okay, and because it does have two, as long as you're uh, not like drawing a high amount of wattage from it, you can actually hot swap the batteries on that one, okay? And for charging mode, that one does charge sequentially, all right? Um, it doesn't have pass-through charging, has no solar charging options. I mean, it does have the Wi-Fi Bluetooth connectivity, um, so that is available there. And the cost for the bare tool is not available because right now that kit is only sold as a kit. So like I said, you can buy the kit for $2,200, comes with two six amp hour batteries, and the two six amp hour batteries will give you a 864 watt hour battery capacity. So that's pretty much the same as like if you were to buy this with like four 12 amp hour batteries or whatnot, okay? And also the same as if you were to buy the Ryobi one with four six amp hour batteries. So 864 watt hours of battery capacity, okay? Um, so that one obviously has, uh, well, not obvious, but um, I'm sure you could probably look at other stuff, but it does have a few quirks and things. Like if you're not drawing a lot of power from it for a, a, enough time, it will cut off for a safety feature and things like that. And most of these um, will cut off if you're not drawing any power from it, but you could draw a little power and they will stay on, okay? So um, keep that in mind. But I do really like the DeWalt one mainly because it doesn't take like a wall ward and charge brick or anything like that. All you really need is a basic extension cord and it does like literally do his job. The one thing it's designed to do, it does it pretty well. Okay. All right, you guys, so let's talk about this one here. This one right here is the Ego Nexus Power Station, model number PST3040. And it runs on their Ego Arc Lithium 56 volt batteries, okay? And on this power station, it can take up to four batteries, okay? And if you have the right capacity and number of batteries, it will do 2000 watts continuous and 3000 watts peak. And it is a pure sine wave inverter, okay? It has three 110 or 120 volt um, AC outlets, four USB-A outlets, and that's only it, and you have to turn those on independently, okay? This one is a little bit different than all the other ones, mainly because this one can connect to um, your Wi-Fi network, okay? Um, and uh, you can use it, you, there's an app that you can really use that you can connect to Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. I generally connect to the Wi-Fi because if I'm anywhere in the house, I can really see it or use the app to connect to it. I don't have to be literally right next to it in order for the Bluetooth to work. So that one works pretty, pretty well. Okay, and the number of batteries that are required to operate the tool, turn it on or whatnot, is one. So if you have one high, um, high 
um, amp bridge battery, you can really get the 2000 watts continuous from here. One two amp hour battery will not get you 2000 watts continuous. I think it drops down to whatever it can. Can't remember what it is, like 800 or 1600 watts or something like that. So make sure you kind of keep that in mind, okay? And the way that you charge this is a power brick. So I don't have the power brick here right now, but it comes with a black power brick that looks exactly like this, just a little bit smaller. Um, and it takes pretty much your standard, uh, I think it's like a C14 or C13 um, cord and you just plug it into the wall and it charges the, the batteries connected to this power station. The way that it charges the batteries is actually very interesting, mainly because it goes around and levels out and charges the batteries roughly equally. Meaning, if, if this one has three bars and this one has like one bar and they're the same amperage battery, it'll charge the one bar battery up to three bars to match this one. And then it'll switch over and start charging this one. It won't charge them in parallel. It won't bring one battery all the way fully up. It kind of charges all the batteries equally. It wants to kind of maintain that, that, um, that I don't know, um, charge of the batteries pretty equally. So make sure you keep that in mind. This one right here is a solar charge controller for the Nexus, okay? And I did a separate video on this one, but this, this solar charge controller allows you to use this Nexus power station remotely and charge it remotely via solar, okay? And this one costs roughly around 150 bucks for just this controller. It comes with the controller and like an XT60 to like a MC4 adapter or whatnot, but it does allow you to charge it and it works decently well, okay? Um, it does not fast charge all of them, um, as we already talked about, it doesn't do parallel charging. And um, the cost for the bare tool by itself will run you around 500 bucks. You could buy it as a kit, which I have shown here, two seven amp hour batteries for roughly around $1,000. It did go on sale, I think it was like 750 or 799 previously at the default. I think I posted a deal about that. If you got it then, great. Otherwise, you're probably gonna have to pick this up at Lowe's or Ace Hardware now, mainly because it is only sold at Ace or Lowe's, Ace or Lowe's, Lowe's, hardware store? I don't know. Now, um, it used to only be at the depot, but now it's only at Lowe's and Ace Hardware. Um, and you can buy it as a two 7.5 amp hour kit for roughly around $1,000, or they sell another kit option, which is two five, four five amp hour batteries for 1,300 bucks, okay? If you wanted to max this system out with, um, for whatever reason, like you need to do one event and you want it to last or whatnot, you could buy, build the highest performance capacity system on this Ego Nexus power station by buying four 10 amp hour batteries. Yes, they do have 10 amp hour batteries that exist. They're mainly used on the, on the riding Zero Z6 mower, but if you buy four of those and this tool, you, it'll cost you around $2,300, but you will get 2,240 watt hours of capacity, okay, of battery capacity. And the 10 amp hour batteries will cost you roughly around 450, okay? So not too long ago, um, we went to like a, uh, in a neighborhood type event where you were outside and it's this huge green like soccer field type thing and the blow up uh, movie screen and things like that and they were running different types of generators like a small Honda EU generator to power some of that stuff. Some of the AV stuff was kind of powered by something like this um, and they can literally hot swap the batteries and keep it going. The great thing about that is that it's very quiet and it doesn't make any like emission or noise or any of that. So an AV type situation outdoors, you need something like that, it will obviously work really well. You just need to pay attention to make sure that you're not, not too low on batteries and go swap them out if you didn't need that. So this one is obviously really great to use for that type of situation. It is very big, it's pretty heavy, it's probably the most inconvenient to use in terms of you kind of have to lug it around both hands. It's kind of hard to carry this at one hand. Um, especially if you load it up with batteries, it's impossible. Um, but anyways, there is that. All right, you guys, so that's pretty much detailed uh, in depth uh, on specs and reviews on some of those power stations in general. Um, I do have uh, full videos on this charger and this one by itself. Uh, if you wanna check those out, make sure you check that out. But anyways, that kind of gives you like a kind of high level overview. So which one is the best one for you? All right, so I would really encourage you to go with whatever battery platform that you have, okay? Because those batteries are gonna be interchangeable and you can pretty much always have batteries ready to go or whenever you need it, right? So the right answer is probably that. If you wanted a specific opinion or if you have a specific use case for certain things like that, I would say um, obviously pick whatever really needs needs you. For If you want like a highest capacity type system that you can really run like outdoor AV event or something like that, the Ego is probably the better way to go. Um, 
but for just general home usage, if you don't have any of them, and you're trying to figure out which one to really start to get into, and you don't have a lot of power tool batteries or whatnot, I'll probably say this Ryobi one's pretty good one to probably get started with, mainly because you can kind of buy some of their tools. They're, they're Ryobi 40 volt tools, not necessarily the top tier uh, brands or whatnot, but for, for general usage, like carrying to like a ballpark or a game or tailgating, whatever, this one is actually fairly simple because you can literally pick it up one hand, it's fairly easy to use, um, it's got four USB-A outlets, and most important of all, I think, to me at least, it has two USB Type-C uh, ports. And if you have like a MacBook or anything that uses USB-C, you can really charge directly from this power station in general by plugging into the USB-C port and not necessarily using a wall brick to plug in the AC and just lo losing a lot from the conversion from DC to AC and then AC back to DC. So this one is obviously a good one to get if you just want to get started. Plus the Ryobi stuff isn't necessarily too expensive. That one is obviously great. If you're looking for something that's just like heavy duty and you just needed to do one thing really well and it's job site or whatnot, obviously a DeWalt is probably the one you want to get. It's heavy duty, it's rugged, they all have roll cages or whatnot. Um, and since you can parallel charge four batteries, um, this is obviously a good one to go with. And you can use flex volt and 20 volt batteries and you can mix and match them too, right? So I can take this out and put a 20 volt, regular 20 volt battery and it works fine. The only thing is you have to have four batteries in order to use pull power from it, but you can push power to batteries with any combination number of batteries. So. Like I said, the best one is whatever it fits your needs. Hopefully this one gives you a quick overview on things like that. None of this video is sponsored. This is all stuff that we've actually used um, and bought with our own monies or whatnot. And luckily for us, we've had it through power outages and it's really helped us out. Like a sump pump and things like that. DeWalt, rock solid, ready to go, no problem. Um, so, like I said, hope this video helped you guys out, brought some kind of clarity on some of the things. But if you are gonna get one, I would definitely get one with uh, power tote brand or at least one that's that's reputable and will be around for a long time, right? So, haven't had any issues with that. Um, the reason there's a lot of dust around some of the stuff is because we've been kind of using this uh, Craftsman two horsepower router. Like this, uh, we're doing, well not with this bit, but we're doing some routing on some trim and things like that. And this is a two, two horsepower um, Craftsman router, I think it, it says on here like 12 amps or 13 amps. The surge or inrush current will be a little bit more, but all of these power stations can run that. Okay, no problem. Under load, it, it does work really well. Um, the one thing I will no I say that I noticed was that the Ryobi has like a voltage sag after a while. Um, and once the battery starts to get really low, you kind of see that. Um, but if you're watching, like connecting it to a TV or anything like that, you're not gonna notice any of that because it's, it's no, not a real problem for something like that, okay? Um, but like I said, they all either also run the Delta Cruiser miners hall that we have, so that works really well. All the tools that we have generally works pretty well. So job site, recommended probably tailgating event power outage type thing recommended, but all of them work generally pretty well. So like I said, hope this video helped you guys out and we'll see you guys next time.